are there any correlates to these three ideas of say akshara matra and swara in english because at one level there are similarities in languages at another level there are differences also so we of course have pronunciation now in english there are rhymes and there is there are poems which are written and there are songs which are sung sometimes poems are can be read as text sometimes they can be sung as songs uh, overall i notice that the level of sophistication with respect to rules of grammar as well as rules of uh, articulation uh, expression they are much more intricate in sanskrit yes uh, but is there anything similar with respect to the akshara <clears throat> matra and swara yeah these are actually principles that would apply to all languages right let's say akshara means uh, akshara shuddhi refers to the fidelity of pronunciation okay. so in in english uh, we may pronounce uh, the the alphabets differently the words differently isn't it so if we don't pronounce a, an alphabet properly like for example you pronounce v as b or you know something yeah. like that so yeah some yes. pronounce people pronounce m <clears throat> as yam or something like that yes yes okay. <clears throat> then you come to matra shuddhi when <clears throat> you talk about the vowels okay so we may not understand uh, we may not know the exact uh, which is a long vowel which is a short vowel um <clears throat> uh yeah so, for example that could yeah. be an example sorry the and d the yeah. th when the e is sometimes louder sometimes it is less emphasis or would that come in swara yes yeah, swara would be <clears throat> <clears throat> it's not so much in, in english there's not so much of dependency but the intonation does matter for example uh, you tell me uh, uh, you know uh, yeah. let's say were you happy when this happened and i can say was i happy when this happened you know so i i emphasize or i emphasize a certain thing or you say the word i you emphasize the i or you emphasize a certain word and there's a certain intonation in which you chant so the basic uh, principles of these three are found in all languages but it's just that in sanskrit it is far more sophisticated and i'm also not a sanskrit expert by the way so i want to make that disclaimer um, but overall it's it is the sophistication and comprehensiveness um it is uh, something unparalleled in the sanskrit language okay so the point i was making is that in the shruti uh, there is a very great emphasis on, on the akshara shuddhi the matra shuddhi and the swara shuddhi while in the smriti shastras also there is some degree of emphasis definitely i mean uh, but it's not of the kind <clears throat> in uh, that is required for the shrutis so to what you said earlier about how there is some malleability or some flexibility in this uh, in the um, smriti shastras is is correct <clears throat> for example the uh, <clears throat> sorry what narad muni tells uh, <clears throat> vyasadev mm. you know about uh, uh, how one may not be uh make mistakes in the pronunciation etc you remember from first canto yes 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 i think uh propas also <clears throat> there that uh, propas also emphasizes that further that uh, there is that tadvagu sargo janata viplavo that yes. was also come yasmin pratishloka abhidav abhidavatyapi yes yasmin pratishloka abhidavatyapi naman yanantas yashonkitan so because it is the glorification of the supreme lord therefore even if there is some discrepancy in the pronunciation or in the matra or the swara or the akshara you know it's it's uh it doesn't really matter so much because the genuine mood of devotion to the supreme lord supersedes these other three okay right so um but in the vedas 
in the four Vedas, especially, you know, there's a lot of emphasis was given on these three. And if you made even a slight error, then the whole endeavor was considered spoiled. And sometimes it would even have a reverse effect. Like we see in that uh, pastime in the Bhagavatam where Pashta. Yes. That Pashta, right? Yeah, Pashta. He uh, gave away the offerings of sacrifice to the Asuras and um, Indra and the Devas were very happy. And Indra, I think, asked him to leave and then Pashta was unhappy and then he performed a sacrifice in, um, in which he said, Indra Shatru Vardhasva. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, but because he pronounced it wrong, it had the opposite effect. Now, the word Indra Shatru uh, can have two meanings. It can have uh, a meaning as the enemy of Indra. Shatru means enemy. Or it can mean Indra, who is the enemy. Yes. Right? So, and the difference between the two uh, emerges on the Swaras. So, if your Swara, if your Swara Shuddhi is not there, then uh, even though in, you intend to say one thing, you may end up meaning the other thing uh, or saying the other thing with the opposite meaning. Right? So, uh, Tvashta intended to say, uh, may the enemy of Indra flourish. Yes. But because his Swara was wrong, so it ended up saying, may Indra the enemy flourish. Right? Yes. So, we find this in the Bhagavatam, right? This pastime of Tvashta. Yes, correct. So we see this, how, how important it is in the, uh, uh, you know, the Shrutis. Whereas in the Bhagavatam, it's not really that important. Although we should try to, you know, pronounce correctly and all that. Prabhupada did place a lot of emphasis on this. Yes. Hmm. Uh, um, of course, we know that ultimately Bhava Grahi Janardana, that uh, Krishna ultimately uh, looks at the devotion in our heart. And that supersedes anything else. However, when there is devotion, we do try to do these other things properly also. 